with the vodka infused popcorn and today our flavor will be the Syrah watermelon. The limited edition is really good. It has a really good watermelon taste to it as well. So I do want to remind you guys to hit the subscription and hit the notification bell so that you're notified whenever I do drop a tutorial or any of our episodes and stuff that we have going on. For right now, I will leave all of these on this channel and eventually I will move them to their own channel. Anything that I have that's school related, but I have a lot going on, so we'll just leave that here. So yes, today is the vodka infused. And I have very detailed notes here so that I can give you guys a full tutorial. Most tutorials do have a list of the ingredients they use and how to do it. But none of them really goes into depth and explain why you do and why you use what you use. But if there is something that's not covered, you didn't understand, or you have any questions, please feel free to drop those in the comments. Also, share, like this video, and all that great little stuff. Um, also, if you want to see my creations, you can tune into my Instagram at Styles for Days and check me out over there. So let's get into this recipe. I'm going to go over everything that you need first. So the recipe calls for four to six cups of popcorn. So this is four cups and this is another two cups. And I also always have an extra amount of popcorn because popcorn pops to different sizes and you don't want to waste your syrup and you know waste product so always have extra and we'll get into why when we get into the mixing part as to why you want to have extra but sometimes you may have a little more syrup than you do popcorn because again popcorn pops in different sizes so we have that then we have two cups of sugar which is here and this is regular granulated sugar it's not a specific brand um, sugar is sugar the only time it gets tricky is if it needs to be confectioner sugar or um, certain different granules. That's the only thing that really matters. And yes, it, it is true that um, more expensive brands, they are more expensive because some of them are a little more refined and their process is a little a little better than just, you know, like regular sugar. But you don't need to worry about what brand that is. Okay, so we have the two tablespoons of butter here. And if you see me looking to the side, this because I have my notes. But the two tablespoons of butter, this is unsalted. And the reason why this is unsalted is because my popcorn has natural, it's natural with sea salt added. So I didn't wanna make it too salty, salty and overpower what flavor we're going for. So that's why it's unsalted. However, if you pop your own popcorn and it doesn't have any salt or anything like that and it's not buttered, then feel free to use salted butter. And it does not have to be room temperature. Um, the only time room temperature butter comes into play is when you're doing it for like butter creams and icings and cakes. That's when it becomes critical to know which which butter you want to use, how soft or if it's room temperature or if it can come straight from the refrigerator. But in this case, it doesn't matter because we're going to heat it up into the syrup anyways. So um, then we have the one fourth cup of vodka, which like I said, we're using this one which is the Summer Watermelon by Ciroc. It has a really good watermelon flavor, by the way. And then a half cup of the corn syrup, which is here. And then also a half a dram of flavoring. This bottle is considered a dram. And a dram is 3.7 milliliters or 0.125 fluid ounces. And I have it turned backwards for no specific reason but the flavor is watermelon so that it can help illuminate the watermelon flavor of the vodka so only a half a dram which is a half a bottle of that and I don't know the exact measurements I can do that for you guys and maybe put that down in the, in the description but um, I just I've done this for so long I just kind of eyeball it so my apologies for that but just a half a dram then also you'll need um, a half teaspoon of food coloring. You may need more or less, and that's depending on how tense you want the color. And also, just a word to the wise, which I have red to match the watermelon. A word to the wise is when you do use like dark colors or colors that you want to stand and pop out, add white food coloring in first. And it's generally sold everywhere. I've even seen it in Walmart. Um, but use white food coloring and then add your color and it'll make the color pop and stand out. So that's how we get the big, bright, bold colors. We start with the white, and then we add in our colors. 
Also, just to go back to the flavoring, I did want to let you guys know that I'm using, again, the watermelon because this is watermelon, but I've also done a pina colada popcorn, which is a coconut flavoring mixed with the pineapple flavoring. And then use one of the um, Amsterdam's, I believe it was coconut vodkas. So just use whatever flavor that matches with whatever you're trying to get. Because you can even just use plain vodka and then add your own flavoring. So it doesn't have to be a flavored vodka. I just wanted to mention that too. It could just be a plain one. But in the event that you do use uh, uh, alcohol that is not flavored, then use the whole dram. So if it is a non-flavored alcohol or vodka, use the whole bottle, not just half. And the only reason why we're using half is because, again, this has a flavor in it. And um, so that's pretty much for the ingredients. Now what I do have here is you'll need a rather large bowl. I have a wood spoon, and it doesn't matter the material. I've used them all. I've used metal bowls, I've used plastic bowls, I've used metal utensils, wood utensils, and plastic utensils. This is just one of my favorite, and I just prefer wood utensils, which um, a lot of candy makers actually say that using wood is better. Anyways, um, but if you want to use a metal bowl, that's fine too. Metal does hold temperatures, so when you pour the syrup in, it'll be kind of warm, which is a benefit slightly because then the candy doesn't cure as quickly, and it gives you a chance to really get it all mixed in and coated. But it does not matter what you use. Then also you will need a medium saucepan, which this is what I have, and you can see it doesn't matter this either. It doesn't matter if it's non-stick, steel, or even um, copper. That doesn't matter either. And I want you guys to note that I don't have a thermometer, and we'll get into that later. Also, we have wax papers. You'll need this to line your cookie sheets. And I have these as storage options. And these are cello bags, disposable cello bags. They sell these at Walmart, comes with 20, but that's just a plain bag. Then also I have these, these are trending right now. And these are like the flag shaped cello bags. And these come 50 to account for only four bucks at Hobby Lobby. And no, this is not sponsored by anything. I, mean, I just, I shop it a lot. If y'all watch my vlogs, y'all will see. Then I have this two quart canister, which is also from Walmart. And no, Walmart did not pay me for this either, but I just shop there a lot. If you watch my vlogs, you see that too. So this is an option. And then also, I just found this, which was a gallon option. So yeah, you have a bunch of different stuff you can use. And I also want to let you guys in on a little secret of mine. There are cookie sheets, and most of those people buy and use. I like to use... These are oven rack liners. You actually can buy these to place on the bottom of your oven to catch anything that falls and then they're disposable because they're aluminum, which means you can throw them out and they're recyclable because again, they're aluminum. But if you notice, these are huge. When we come back after I go ahead and set everything up, I'll get one of my regular size cooking sheets and show you what the difference is. But because it is meant to fill up the whole bottom of your oven, it gives you a lot more space to work in. So I like using these even when I'm doing my treats to set my treats because I can just put more on there. And then like I said, if they get bent and flexed and stuff like that, then I can just um, recycle them and buy more. They're only $3, you get a two pack. And I usually use these, I don't know, a multitude of times. And I always line them with parchment paper or wax paper or stuff like that. So yeah, they're very durable and they last for several, several times. But so anyways, I am going to go ahead and pause this here. If you are following along with this with your ingredients, you can pause it here. And then what I'm going to do is move my ingredients over near the sole and get all that set up and I will be right back. But the ingredients you will need to take with you is the sugar, the corn syrup, the vodka, the flavoring, the color, and the butter. The only thing that you don't need at the stove is your popcorn. And we're gonna tell you what to do with that after I move everything over there.
Okay, so I moved everything that I need over at the stove over there, and um, that gave me a little bit of space. So what we're gonna do now is take one of those baking sheet liners I showed you, take the popcorn, spread it out, spread it out evenly, and I'm doing the four cup and the two cup because like I said, always have extra, just in case you have um, more of the syrup left over. So then what I'm going to do is place this in my oven. You can turn your oven on to 200, and the purpose of this is to warm up your popcorn. And the reason why you wanna keep the popcorn warm, and if you just popped it, still put it in the oven so it can stay warm. But the reason is, when you put your candy mixture on here, you one, you don't want it to start seizing up really quickly because the popcorn is cold or you know not at room temperature so it gives you time to to mix all the syrup in so i'm going to do that and then um you guys can meet me over at the stove for the next step okay so now we're back um as you notice i have gloves no not for a real particular reason because i'm not going to be physically touching anything it's just a pet peeve of mine that i use gloves especially when i'm working with orders and stuff like that for sanitary purposes and um here where I am, in order to get your license to be able to cook in the home, you have to um, go through a health environmental class, and so they teach you things. But I'm just a germaphobe in, in general, like I'm the kind of one that wipes down knobs and everything like that, so I always have boxes and boxes of gloves. I don't even touch meat with my hands, I use gloves. So that's why you see these, so it's your preference, but it's just something I do. So then I have my, um, this, I guess this would be like a spatula, wooden spatula that I'm going to be using. Nothing is on yet. And then I have the pot that I showed you guys. This is so simple, you guys. It's nothing to this very major. All you're going to do is pour your sugar in. I just tap it to make sure I get in all my ingredients. You pour your corn syrup in. And there's no real, real reason... That's so why I'm putting this in any type of particular way. I just have my lovely assistant hand me a spatula so that I can scrape all my ingredients out, make sure you get everything out. A lot of people don't realize, but when you don't get all of your ingredients that you measured out, you're actually altering the recipe. So for some of you who do follow a lot of these tutorials online, you're like, but I did everything and it still came out wrong or something. It could be even slight things like this, you know, like not getting every last bit of your ingredient. It can really alter a recipe. So also I do know that corn syrup is very thick. So it's always like a residual amount that you really can't scrape all the way out. So I always put just a tidbit more so that I get my whole amount that's required for the recipe. So then you take your vodka and you pour that in. And it smells really good, you guys. And then your butter. So that's all your ingredients. The only thing that you have left to worry about is flavoring and color. And so you turn this on to a medium heat, medium. It doesn't need to be high, but medium. And then we're just gonna stir this until it starts to boil. So at this point, you guys, I'm just gonna stir this as it boil. What you guys will see is a sped up version of it until it gets to the next stage. And then um, I, got, I will be cued back in. But yeah, so this is just stirring it until it liquefies and uh, boil. And again, it's no real reason why I put things in in the order I did. It doesn't matter how you do, just it's a one pot thing. So just put everything in there.
Okay, as you guys can see, it's boiling now. And so what we will do at this point is just set your timer for five minutes and then let it just boil again. This is the part where you may wonder, well, there's no thermostat. How will we know what temperature that it is? Well, all we're trying to do really is just allow enough time for the mixtures to all incorporate. So this is not a candied situation where we're trying to make it hard as well. So when you're doing candy apples and things like that, of course you want things to be at a hard crack stage and other various type of candies you want at different temperatures to um, get the type of texture you're going for. But in this case, we're just simply boiling this for five minutes in order to get all the ingredients incorporated and get the sugar broken down from the granulated state into a smooth syrup. And so that usually happens with sugar when it gets to the five minute mark. Everything should be completely smooth and it'll be clear liquid. So at this point, you guys, I'm just gonna pause here and, well, for my voice anyway, and then I'm gonna speed this process up so that you guys can see how this goes so if it's looking really bubbly like this this is completely normal and this is what you want and if it's not bubbling up as much then your temperature could be a little down on your stove eye so you can turn it up a little bit just to get it to this rolling boil state and you don't have to worry about stirring this because as with sugar cookies excuse me not sugar cookies my bad you guys um candy apples you don't stir Sugar does not burn and scorch until it gets to a certain temperature and we won't even touch that temperature here So you don't have to worry about the only thing that you stir continually and that will be on another tutorial is The brown sugar syrups They will burn and scorch and stick to the bottom And that is because of an ingredient in that and we will get into that on another tutorial But you don't have to stir this you can just let it ride. Okay, so we're back and I have turned off the, um, the heat so there's no heat. And what you're doing is waiting for the bubbling to subside. So I'm gonna remove it from the stove sitting here on my trivet. And then you want these to be completely stopped before you add other ingredients because uh, candy is very temperamental or syrup is very temperamental and it can bubble and um, it can boil over or blow over and uh, then that makes for a very dangerous situation because if this gets on you you can get very bad burns because one of the main things is it's candy so it's not something you can blow and cool off it takes a while for candy to slow down and cool off so we have our here's where well you see it's not bubbling anymore and it's slowly subsiding I did kind of I'll just do this like this but you guys can see that it is clear under here so there is no sugar granules those are just bubbles and as you can see as I'm moving it you see how it is bubbling and boiling back up that's why you want the the bubbling to subside before you start messing with it but I'm going to go ahead now at this point, which for most of you, if you're not comfortable, you can wait until this is completely gone. And then you'll just see the clear liquid that I pulled back for you to see, and then you can add the rest of your stuff. But here, this is where I'm going to add my half a dram, and I'm measuring it by eye. Okay, that's my half a dram of the watermelon flavoring. And then I'm going to add my food coloring, about a teaspoon of it. And then we're just going to stir and mix this all in. By the way, you can either put your flavoring in, mix it and stir it, and then put your color in and mix it and stir it. Me. I'm just doing it all together because it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't change a consistency. It's n no real reason to that. So it's up to you if you want to do it together or you want to do them individually. That's completely your call. And then as you can see that it did kind of smoke up a bit and that's fine. 
that's just the ingredients marrying together nothing to be alarmed about and as you can see the good teaspoon of the red food coloring which this is a gel I don't use liquid liquid tastes more inky so I use the gel as you can see it has a really good red color to it all the bubbling has subsided and now you guys you have syrup you have vodka infused syrup by the way this does not work on apples and other things because it is not at the hard crack stage which is the um, 300 degree temp so it will not stick and hold this is just simply for this kind of method it will not form hard enough for suckers either so again this is just for syrup purposes not for um, candying so the popcorn that we've had in the oven warming up this whole time I'm going to grab that leave this here for a moment and then I'm going to grab my popcorn okay so I grabbed my popcorn out of the oven and now all that I'm doing is as you can see this pan I just took this out the oven and I'm touching it so it's never intended to go in there to literally cook just to keep warm so now I'm going to take my popcorn try to secure it <laughs> I'm going to take my popcorn and pour it all into my bowl. I'm going to mix with. And again, this is the whole six cups. You guys start with the four cups and then add the two cups. I'm doing this because, again, I kind of can eyeball these things at this point. But start with the four then do this next step of mixing and then see if you need to add more so the wax paper we need that to coat our baking sheet which usually i will use the baking sheet that i just had the popcorn on and just throw this up on here but for timing purposes we're just going to grab the other one and because I'm using this huge one, I'm going to lay two pieces down to cover the full sheet. The reason for this is because you don't want the popcorn to stick to the actual pan. So now I'm going to grab the candy, the syrup, and I am going to just pour this all over the popcorn. Don't be afraid, you guys. Don't be afraid. And I didn't pour all the syrup yet because I like to mix it in a little bit and then add more. But don't be afraid that it's going to make your popcorn soggy. It's not. So now you just stir and you mix until everything is completely coated. You just stir and you mix and you stir and you mix. And so I can tell that I need the rest of my my syrup so I'm just going to come back over here and then I'm going to scrape the rest out of the pot and then I'm going to mix it all in you do want to work fast because time is of an essence it can set but you don't have to work so fast that you're crushing the popcorn trying to get it all mixed in it's completely okay and then if you want to stop and take some out <clears throat> that are completely coated to give yourself more room because maybe you don't have a big enough mixing bowl then you can always stop you know right here in the process and take some some of the popcorn out and go ahead and, and lay it on the cookie sheet but again I'm can kind of eyeball these things and I just kind of like to do it all at once you guys will come to see I'm like a one pot person let's just get it all done and in so as you can see with the recipe that I gave you and the popcorn that I had the six cups of popcorn was pretty sufficient there is a few little popcorns that may not have a hundred percent coverage it's not a perfect science, but this is fine, and I'm comfortable with this. And you see it's like a big clump. Don't worry. You still have a little bit of time. So now just plop it all down on your cookie sheet. And then at this time, the, the syrup has cooled down, so you can touch it. It's not 
so hot that it's going to burn you. So now what you're doing is you're spreading this all out. Laying it flat evenly over the whole cookie sheet. You want it flat and even as possible, but if not, that's fine because you're going to break these apart anyways. So then I'm going to take this and place this back in my oven that is still at 200 from 5 to 10 minutes. So 5 to 10 minutes, but you're going to be checking it. As you can see, it's really, really glossy. It's really glossy and you can tell when it's getting to the done part because it won't be as glossy. What we're doing is putting it in the oven so that it can dry it out some and bring back that popcorn crunch. So that's the purpose of the oven. And again, you can see it's really, really shiny right now. And then I'll show you in the oven when it's near done how um, it won't be as shiny. And that's one of the ways you can tell. Again, don't be alarmed or worried if it's in clumps and stuff because you're gonna break this apart anyways. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so we're back. As you can see, they do not have that extra glossy sheen, which means if they're dry and they're pretty much ready. But it's still really warm. So I like to allow mine to cool all the way off and then it'll allow them to get a little more, a little more firmer. But I did just want to like pick some up. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but as you can hear, they are hard. And then once I let this cool, cool some, I will actually um, like crunch into some so you can see how they sound. And then I'm gonna package them all. I think this is enough. To fit into the gallon size but i'm just going to put it in here anyway so i'll be back with that momentarily so. okay you guys so i'm back it's cooled off as you can see it breaks apart let me see you hear this crunchy like popcorn would be so all i'm going to do is just break it up so i'm going to put it into the container over here into my gallon container. All you do is just peel this little wax off. It shouldn't stick for the most part. All right, all if you want, you can butter coat your wax paper too. And this is why putting them down evenly kind of matters so that they'll coat and be broken up when you make it and you don't have to, they won't break into literal crumbles and stuff like that. So, but I'm just doing this for a tutorial to get you guys going. So you can enjoy this at your next event or if you're providing these to people. But yeah, so now it's just a bunch of breaking it up and putting it into the container. Again, if you were able to lay all your popcorn out individually, then you shouldn't have to break it up so much. And this stuff back here doesn't have anything to do with this. I'm doing an order for a gender reveal. So that's what that's for. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and continue doing this and then I will be right back with the review. Okay, and so in review, I have my notes here. So this is how much that batch yielded. I can probably fit another cup in here to bring it all the way up. But yeah, so it got just about a gallon size container. Um, this is how I sell it. I had a label on there. And it basically says at the bottom, 
made for, for the grown and mature. Just so people are reminded, these are not for kids. It does have alcohol in it as an ingredient. You can see I did a red and green to symbolize a watermelon, because that's what flavor it is. So my point in that to get this green is that I had used the white first, the white food coloring first, then I added the green to make the green stand out in, in bold. So in review, as you guys noticed, there was no thermometer needed because why we're not trying to make candy, we were making syrup. So we weren't even reaching those temperatures to need a thermometer. Have I ever used one? Absolutely not. Has the um, syrup not came out correctly because I didn't use one? No problems. It's always been the same consistent. Always have a little extra popcorn because popcorn comes in various shapes and sizes. Therefore, you want to yield the most and not waste your syrup. So always have more popcorn. If you want, you can go ahead and get two trays warmed up just in case. As you guys seen, if I would have went with the original four cup, I would have had more syrup left, but I added in the whole six cups and that's what produced this amount. So always have extra popcorn on standby and warm. Also, the pot, the bowl, even the utensils that you use does not matter. It will not vary your results, whether it's aluminum, plastic, uh, copper, nonstick, steel, it doesn't matter. It will yield the same results. Only thing I will say is that aluminum, it holds heat as far as your mixing bowls go. So it'll give you a little more time to mix, but it doesn't make like a huge noticeable difference. I just know from experience that using the metal bowls, uh, they use, they, they conduct heat so you can keep things warmer just a little bit longer not warm like heat and then also when you're using it for mixing icings and things like that you can put them in the freezer and they'll be super really cold and chill to try to for like um like a whip like a whip icing i'll say so yeah anywho also you can keep this for like a week that's depending on packaging i don't know if it lasts longer because i never have tried it i make these things i personally don't drink so this is not nothing I indulge in consuming. So I'm usually making them and giving them out. So people usually buy them to eat them right then. So I just know from experience that it'll be about a week. I did keep this one for reference. I made this about, matter of fact, on Mother's Day. So I think that's been two weeks now. So you can hear. And then when I did bite into it, it is not as crunchy as this, as this, but it's still very flavorful and it's not stale. So that's the difference. This is about a couple of weeks out. I know that if not a little bit longer, and I know that this can last for a week. And again, that's depending on packaging. Also, you can use any vodka. Someone had asked, can you use anything else? Any vodkas you can use i have not tried any other type of clear um, liquors but i've tried the different vodkas so you're very well open to do that just remember this recipe calls for watermelon because we were going for the watermelon syrup whatever flavor vodka you use remember to use that same flavoring or also if you don't want to use a flavorful vodka but you just want to use a certain specific vodka like Belvedere or anything like that but you want it to have a flavor you can go ahead and do that as well pick any flavor you like or you don't have to add any flavor what that will taste like is basically like a sugar coated popcorn it just won't have a taste it'll be sweet like sugar but it won't have like a real flavor more like a candy apple flavor is what it would have so if you guys remember how that tastes, then that's the kind of flavor to have. And then as far as the color go, I said half a teaspoon, but do that by eye. If you feel like you want your colors a little bolder, add more. If you want them to stand out, add the white. Don't forget to add the white. Also, you can make this non-alcoholic. Take out the one fourth cup of the vodka and add a half cup of water and then any color you want. And there is the non-alcoholic version which i've made for the kids bubblegum flavor watermelon flavor cotton candy flavor all of those 
So yeah, if you want to do it that way and make it non-alcoholic, you can. Not just for kids, because some of us adults that don't drink alcohol. So yeah, other thing, does the alcohol cook out? No, it does not. This is not the same as making like a um, steak or something on the stove where you have the alcohol. Because if you notice when you're cooking with the alcohol and those type of um, recipes, you burn off the alcohol. That's what the bluish color flame that comes over the food is. You're burning the alcohol portion of that liquid off. In this case, you did not see that. So no, it does not burn off. It is infused. It is an ingredient in the popcorn. So that's why I put made for grown and mature only. So that concludes our tutorial. And yes, don't forget to like and subscribe. I do have this tutorial currently for sale. I will release it eventually to the public. So that's why I'm telling you guys to tune in and subscribe. I also put all my links and stuff like that below or somewhere on the screen. I'm still figuring out the editing, so excuse me on that. But yeah, other than that, this has concluded your Watermelon Ciroc tutorial. I appreciate you guys. And I know that my tutorials are long, but I'm giving you guys the information that no one does. They give you ingredients, they tell you how to do it, but they don't go into depth as to why things are what they are, or if you do things certain ways, will it mess up? All those questions you usually have, I'm making sure that I answer. But if I didn't answer something, please let me know, message me, drop them in the comments, however that works for you better, and I will be sure to answer your questions. Thanks again. I'm Shay from Styles for Days. Check me out. You can see all my wonderful treats. And um, see you next time.